When it comes to getting newbies into the hobby of watch collecting, I can't think of many pieces that are more influential than the Seiko SNK 809. This incredibly affordable mechanical field watch has been a bestseller for many years and holds a dear place in many men's hearts. While this Seiko 5 has some obvious flaws, it's generally considered a top tier gateway watch. Today, we're going to find out why. Introduced in the mid 2000s, the SNK 800 series replaced the smaller aging SNX and SKX 400 series of similarly styled field watches. While the size did increase, it didn't substantially. This SNK 809 has some really compact dimensions by today's standards. It's a fraction over 37 millimeters wide, 10.7 mil deep, and a short lug to lug of just 42.9 mil. As with many other models in the Seiko 5 range, this is a great fit for small to medium wrists. It never gets in the way just as a field watch shouldn't. With small watches becoming an endangered species these days, I'm unsurprised that so many people enjoy finding a watch with these proportions. I have to admit, I still prefer the slimline case that's available on some of the alternative quartz options. But given the mechanical movement that you get inside this, that's perfectly understandable. The majority of the 316L steel case features a heavily blasted matte finish, giving the watch a titanium-esque look and feel. The bezel sits atop the main body with a shallow slit around the perimeter which doesn't breach through to the internals or anything. This look is maintained by the similarly finished crown that tucks in to give a strikingly symmetrical look. Positioned at the 4 o'clock position, it won't dig into your wrist nearly as much as a standard crown. Unfortunately, the blasted finish stops there. From a 90 degree angle, you can see the polished finish that inhabits the area between the lugs along with that on the case rear. This is disappointing, though not greatly visible when on wrist. Given the implementation, I'm inclined to think that's for cost-cutting reasons rather than aesthetic ones. The second niggle, and arguably the weakest part of the whole watch, is water performance. While I wouldn't expect a field watch to perform as well as a diver in this regard, the notch case back on the SNK 809 only provides 30 meters of water resistance. While this may sound impressive, in practice this means the watch is only really splash-proof rather than repeatedly submergible like you get with higher ratings. This is somewhat disappointing and could well shift its purpose from a true practical field watch to more of a field style watch, depending on your intended purpose. Even a slight upgrade to 5ATM would be very welcome. Nevertheless, there's one key aspect of this watch that could definitely make you look past those weaknesses. Visible through the exhibition case back is that Seiko 21 Jewel 7S26 automatic movement making this watch one of the most affordable ways to get on that mechanical ladder. While it's far from the most exciting or feature-rich mechanism out there, it is reliable and accurate enough for general use and available in a price bracket that's otherwise dominated by low-cost quartz pieces. In the US in particular, it's still available for under $80, even during lockdown, which is crazy. I'll put a link to this on Amazon in the video description. For a newcomer, I don't think you can beat the magic and mystery of looking through the glass and seeing the springs and gears working away there, even if it's just on a low-end watch like this. Hardlex is also present over the dial. This is Seiko's proprietary hardened mineral crystal, which is generally considered to be slightly more scratch-resistant than standard mineral glass whilst not quite achieving the hardness of sapphire, though frankly, I've heard all sorts. I think the dial is another area that adds to the appeal. While only a simple design, it's been executed to a high and tasteful standard for an £80 watch. This variant has a black dial featuring high contrast white text, though there are other variants in the range including cream, blue and green options. I have an affinity towards this dark one purely due to its versatility. Along with the dark date wheel which blends in seamlessly with the rest of the dial, something I can't quite say about other models which feature a white window instead at the 3 o'clock position. Even the font in there appears to match that on the rest of the dial, which is a plus. Outside of that, you have a fairly standard chapter ring featuring relatively small numbers, along with tiny loom pips that mark each hour. A slim white circle houses the rest of the text, including the applied Seiko logo at the typical central position, with the famous Seiko 5 shield placed immediately below it. I'm not normally a fan of that Seiko 5 shield, but I have to admit on this watch, it looks pretty good. It's well sized and suits the colorway rather nicely. Another addition that fits the bill is the handset. These seem to be a cross between the stubbier alpha hands and smoother leaf hands as they widen towards the center and provide great legibility. 
Something about their shape definitely complements the overall style of the watch, though I do wish they were a fraction longer. Nevertheless, I love the second hand, which features a large loomed lollipop as the counterweight and a red streak towards the tip. This adds a flash of colour, which works nicely with the date window, especially when it ticks over to Sunday, which is also displayed in the same red colour. Overall, I think this is a great looking little field watch. And design wise, I think it still holds up well even 15 years after it was released. So far, we've discussed several characteristics that are commonplace among Seiko 5 watches. After all, they were originally designed with an automatic movement, water resistance, day date complication, and a four o'clock crown in mind. However, along with a durable case, a hard wearing strap was also one of the parameters. While you can get Seiko SNK 800 watches with steel bracelets, most will come on a fabric two piece strap like this one. For me, it just makes sense on a field watch and Seiko have a pretty bad reputation for their low end bracelets anyway. So how does this strap hold up? Well, my first impressions have been positive. It's got a blasted sign buckle and mat keepers that closely match the finish of the case. The material itself is thick and double layered with a reinforced section around the holes to boot, which is a nice addition. These have a bit of a mixed reputation online and I think it could be because of the way that they interact with materials. My nylon watch gloves, for example, pill extremely badly when handling this, though I can't say I've had any issues with regular items of clothing. While this strap should be durable, I think aesthetically it'll look better on alternative options. A quick Google search will reveal a ton of alternatives worth investigating. So is this Seiko worth your money? I've said a lot of good things, a couple of bad things. It's funny because I think this is a better watch whilst also being a worse field watch than some of the Quartz Lorises I reviewed earlier in the year. Currently, the SNK809 stands out because there isn't a great deal of mechanical competition, with the next rival offering being the larger and more expensive SNZ series from the same brand. Maybe others just can't compete at such a low price point. 